So why would you put three perfectly ground knives into a vise, hook up a pipe wrench, and bend them till they break? What's going on guys? So today we are gonna be diving into the depths of heat treating. Now this video is not just if you're a knife maker. This video is um, gonna be for a lot of you who are into the knife world, who've never made a knife before, who want to see a better look at just how complicated heat treating a relatively simple steel like 1095 can be. So with that being said, let me give you a quick backstory as to what brought me to this point. on the high speed. So the other day I heat treated three knives, three broken knives here. All three of these knives were heat treated at exactly the same time, meaning they were all placed in the oven at the exact same time and they were quenched. One, two, three. Now the first knife was quenched at five minutes soak time. The second knife was quenched at around six and a half minute soak time. And the last minute or the last knife was quenched at around 10 minutes total soak time. So after I heat treated them all, they all had very slight warps. So slightly in fact that I don't think if you had a granite surface plate, you'd really be able to tell by looking at it with your naked eye. But naturally I wanted to get the blades as straight as possible. So I took them over to the bench vise and I don't have footage of this because I didn't record it, but I went to straighten the warps and one of the blades straightened slightly easier than the other two. Now it kind of stood out in my mind because at this point I've straightened um, probably over a hundred blades. I went on and finished grinding the blades and gave them a, um, a quick surface finish, but I kept coming back to the fact that it was unusual for that particular knife to straighten in as easily as it did. So there was only one thing to do, which was to pull that knife put it in the vise and snap it in half and examine the grain structure. Now, a real quick explanation on grain structure. Grain structure does not tell you everything, but it gives you a really good idea of how effective your heat treating methods are. And it also gives you a really good idea on your temperatures inside the oven as well as soak times in the oven. You can tell a lot from a grain structure. Now typically what you're looking for is a very fine, uh, even grain structure throughout the entire section of steel. Now you'll kind of see what I'm talking about as we get into this video a little bit farther. So when I took that knife, the problem knife, over to the vise and bent it, the interesting thing was is that it bent and actually took a set, meaning it bent and stayed bent. Um, it did this a lot easier than um, a properly heat treated knife should have. The knife actually bent almost to 90 degrees before it snapped and it didn't take an awful lot of force for that to happen. But after breaking the blade and examining the grain structure, I did notice that there was some significant grain growth inside the steel. Now, after seeing that, I went back and reviewed the footage and it turns out that that was indeed the last blade that I quenched. So at this point, I had to take the other two and snap them in half as well because I needed to know what was going on in the heat treatment process. So I broke both of those blades. This is... Man, difficult to break. Real quickly, both of those blades, um, they were not easy to break. And I mean, they were not easy to break, meaning I put my entire 150 pounds on them. I couldn't hardly break them. I literally had to jump up and down on a pipe wrench to get these things to snap. They also didn't bend nearly as much before they broke. So they were nice springy blades with an awful lot of strength. And guess what? The grain structure inside both of those knives was really fine and relatively even. Now I didn't normalize any of these blades, meaning they were straight from the mill, 
cut off, ground the shape, and put in the oven. No thermal cycling whatsoever. And again, we had relatively fine even grain structure in both of those steels. There are a couple of places, um, after examining them really close up, where um, you do see a little bit of grain enlargement or grain irregularities in certain parts of the blade. But it's very, very, very minimal, and it's really hard to see with the naked eye. So at this point, I had to run a test. So I cut five pieces off the same bar of 1095. I placed them evenly inside the oven, numbered one through five, one through five, and they were quenched in that order, one through five. The first piece was quenched at five minutes. The second piece was around six minutes. I don't have the exact times with me. I have them written down up at the house. But anyway, first piece was quenched at five minutes, and then as quickly as possible, I moved through them. And then by the time I got to the last piece, we were right around 10 minutes. Now I wasn't expecting as a uh, kind of a uh, slap in the face result as the one that we got. I thought there'd be a lot more um, of a subtle result than there was in this test, but on the surface, I don't think that the results can be denied. So let me show you what we have going on here. So here we have our first test piece. This test piece looks a lot like the two good blades that we broke. Very fine, relatively even grain for a piece of steel that wasn't normalized. Here's the second piece. And again, we have fine, relatively even grain throughout this entire piece. Here's piece number three. And hopefully you can see this, but we are starting to grow uh, grain to a point that we can see it with our naked eye. Here's the fourth piece. This is the fourth piece to be quenched. Again, the information's on the screen. And hopefully you can see this, but we are showing significant grain growth in this piece. And here's piece number five, the last to be quenched. This one was quenched right at around 10 minutes, total soak time at 1475. And you can clearly see that this shows uh, some significant grain growth inside the steel. Now let's compare that with our problem knife. And hopefully you can see how similar the grain structure is inside all of those pieces of steel. They were all quenched right at around 10, 11 minutes total soak time. Now let's compare piece number one on the right hand side with relatively even fine grain structure and piece number five which shows some significant grain growth. Now this also tells me that grain growth plays a significant part in the blade's overall performance even after tempering because all of these blades were tempered in the same oven and I've checked the oven for temperature and my particular oven will hold 400 degrees all day long. I actually tempered these at 420 degrees and it held that temperature at 420 degrees for the four hours that they were in the oven, two cycles at two hours each. So at this point, we know just how much of a role soaking time at temperature can play. And we're not talking about a lot of time here. We're talking about the difference between a couple of minutes. Um, literally two minutes longer of a soak time can mean the difference between a blade that has relatively fine grain structure and a blade that has relatively uneven, maybe some enlarged grain going on, which is, again, not a good thing. Now, I actually ran another test. Now, none of these pieces so far have been normalized, so I ran another test with a sample piece where I ran it through some thermal cycling. The first cycle was done at 1575 degrees. The second cycle was done at 1400 degrees, and the last cycle, which was more of a stress relieving cycle, was done at 1200 degrees. Now again, if you don't know what uh, normalizing or thermocycling is, I will leave a link to a video at the end of this video that will explain it better. Now after normalizing that piece, I ran it through the same quenching procedure, which was bring it to 1475, soak it for exactly five minutes, and then quench it in parks 50. And here's our result. So hopefully you can see just how even and fine that grain structure is throughout that entire piece. Now let's compare that to piece number one. And hopefully you can see the difference there. We still have a relatively fine grain structure in the top two pieces, which are piece number one, but the grain structure itself is not as uniform throughout the entire piece. 
Now let's compare the normalized pieces to piece number five, which was the worst piece. And I'm sure this is fairly obvious, but you can clearly see which pieces have the uh, much more refined, even grain structure in them. Now, in my mind, this test is pretty clear. It's clear as day as to what is going on. Soaking time at temperature for this particular steel, 1095, or this particular batch of steel at 1095, is critical um, as far as grain structure goes. You do not want to soak this for longer than you absolutely have to. So this next test that we're going to do is going to be a temperature test. So we know that five minutes is about the optimal amount of time for soaking. So what we're going to do now is we're going to normalize three pieces so that we start with even grain structures throughout the entire test piece. And then we are going to do a temperature test. We're going to be running the first piece at 1425 for five minutes and then quench as quickly as possible. The second piece we're gonna be doing at 1475 and then quench as quick as possible. And then the last piece is going to be 1525 and quench as quick as possible. All of them with a five minute soak period. So we're at 1200 degrees. We'll stick piece number one in. This will be quenched at 1425. Alright guys, so here we have our three pieces. One, two, three. This was 1425, this was 1450, and this was 1525. So 50 degree increments between the three. Now this is really, really difficult to tell. And again, I'm not sure what you're going to be able to pick up here on the video. But upon closer inspection, it looks to me like the grain in piece number one is ever so slightly finer than piece number two. Same with piece number two. It looks like the grain is slightly finer than piece number three. Now we're talking about very, very, very minute differences here between the three. So this was the first piece that we normalized and then ran at 1475. And that piece looks very similar to piece number two, which it should because essentially they have the exact same heat treatment on them. Now, never mind the dark spots here. That's just where the uh, quenching oil has kind of seeped into the surface. But grain size looks exactly the same. Piece number one does look a touch finer than both of these. And piece number three does look a touch coarser than the other two. So, uh, we ran into a problem. Now, in my mind, this test is pretty clear. It's clear as day as to what is going on. Soaking time and temperature. It's like a week later almost, and I was wrapping up this video or the editing process, and I noticed I noticed a fatal flaw in the testing. So if you remember, one piece, or piece, this piece right here was quenched at 1425, this was quenched at uh, 1475, and then the last one was at 1550. Now this piece in particular, the 1550 degree piece, is the problem piece because we didn't show any sort of significant grain growth. The grain structure in this piece still looks pretty good. Now. This is the confusing part because all of these pieces were put in the oven at around 1200 degrees. So 
uh, they heated from 1200 degrees up to their uh, specific temperature, 1425 or 1475 or 1450, and then quench. Now the 1550 degree piece was in the oven from the time the oven reached 1475 to the time that it reached 1550 degrees. That period of time was over 15 minutes and we didn't see any type of grain growth. So essentially this piece soaked at 1475 and higher for longer than 15 minutes. That right there kind of throws off the entire test. And I'm not real sure what to do about it. I did some basic research on this subject and I couldn't really find anything specific. What I kept running into was that overheating and soaking time does cause grain growth. And that's exactly what we saw in the first, uh, the first test, the one through five test. In the temperature test, the second test, we didn't see that. But what I did learn is that we did get consistent results throughout all the pieces that we heated to 1475, soaked for five minutes, and then quenched as quick as possible. So if you have any suggestions or any thoughts on this subject, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Um, I know some of you have a lot more experience in this than I do. The only conclusion that I think I can come up with is that uh, significantly overheating the steel or over soaking uh, this particular steel or 1095 maybe in general will give you really inconsistent results which is what I'm seeing here I'm seeing consistent results at 1475 for five minutes but super inconsistent results once we go beyond that in both temperature and soak time hopefully somebody gets something from this video the most important thing that I've learned is to do my own testing and my own research um, with each particular steel that I'm going to be using and I think that uh, that's important whether you're using an oven a forge or a charcoal grill do your own testing and snap a couple pieces snap a couple blades and examine the grain structure and at least uh, you'll have that much information About some upcoming videos uh, we got some big plans for this YouTube channel and uh, hopefully in the future I don't know how long into the future uh, some big things are gonna be happening and uh, it might change a little bit